All right, progression, FPV progression. How to go from flying like this to flying like this. I want to talk a little bit about controlled evolution. Uh, basically having control over your FPV progression, over your destiny. Uh, streamlining your quad progression. So this is basically my perfect setup for me, for my style. Uh, could have some minor improvements, but how to go from this, which is the first quad I ever had, to something like this without spending all your money, without getting frustrated and having all these setbacks and kind of having a consistent progression. I'm a firm believer that your gear directly impacts your flight style, directly has to do with how fast you progress in this hobby and even has a, mostly has a effect on your consistency of progression. And there's a few things you can do to kind of minimize those lull periods and kind of maximize the, the progression periods. And one of them is picking the right gear for your style. Now, for example, starting with frames. So really there's only three choices. Now I've flown about 30, 40 different frames. If I could have looked at it this way that, okay, there's really only three, I wouldn't have had to try so many thinking that, oh, this frame is gonna you know, change this and this might help me here. Really you have the Stretch X, and I'll get into what frame is for who, the true X and the wide. So the motor, the, the frame with the biggest distance motor to motor is the axis that you have the most control over. So for example, the motors are widest here on roll. So you have the most control when turning, when doing snap rolls. And also keep in mind that with the uh, motors being even with the camera, you can get a lot lower and closer to objects than you could with something like this where the arms are protruding out. Now this has its own benefits, which I'll talk about in a second. So, but I guess I'm gonna start with the benefits of this. So we talked about getting close to things, getting close to the ground, getting close to objects. We talked about the roll. One of the other advantages of this frame is no props in view. So if you wanna do a cinematic shot, you don't have to crop the footage and shrink your field of view because your props are in view. This frame let's, is more, as you can see, the motor to motor on the pitch axis is further. So you have more control on pitch. So more control, speeding up, slowing down, or changing altitude. And this is good for racers who speed up and slow down a lot. This is good for people who wanna do a lot of snappy maneuvers. And then we have the Truex that is in the middle of the two, it tries its best to uh, even out pitch and roll, although it won't necessarily be able to do that because of the the CG going along the, the middle of the quad. So you don't need to try 30, 40 frames, you can try three and pick which one based on your experiences, based on what I just said, uh, pick one that suits you. Done. Check. So that is the heaviest part of the quad is now eliminated. Next, you're going to need a motor. And for five inch, I really only recommend 2306 or 2207. Everything else is it's overkill or underkill. Now, if you have an ultra light racing rig and you want to go 2305 or 2206 or something like that, go for it. Um, but this is mostly for freestyle, what I'm talking about, not necessarily, or just casual racing, not necessarily competitive racing or spec racing. So with the motors, with 2306, again, you're going to notice there's a theme when I'm talking about my quad. So with 2306, you're going to have the ability to get kind of lower and closer to things as you would with 2207. 
And in my opinion, that's not necessarily because it has more low end power, like some people say. I think it just has a little bit more low end control on the bottom half of the throttle stick. So that's why I run 2306 because I like to go low and fast and be in control. I like to get really close to things when I do proximity. Now 2207 has a little bit more pop at the top. It has a little bit, it's a little bit better for jumping over trees or buildings or uh, open areas where you may need to do some freestyle in a wide open area, get juicy with maybe one object and just kind of swing, fling yourself by it. It's better for basically for flinging maneuvers. This is better for kind of rounded, smooth maneuvers. Not to say that 2207 is not smooth, but again, my opinion, mostly. But that's what I would say. 2208 is a bit overkill for a five inch, unless you're pushing 700 plus grams. Um, there's also some tuning issues when you get into 2208. But yeah, 2407 is kind of out of the, the topic. Uh, I flew 2407 for a while, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Let's not do that anymore. There's your motors. Now we've tackled the two heaviest things. That, that's gonna make up, I think, half the weight of your quad. And when you throw in props, which is the next thing, those three things, the frame, the motors, and the props, make up the bulk of how your quad is gonna fly. So the shape in the air, is it wide this way or this way? Then the weight and where the weight is and the distribution of the weight, all that is frame, motors, props and mostly frame and motors, but props are very important. You don't have to get a new set of motors to, to change something about your quad. All you have to do is change props. My recommendation would be start by trying whatever props you want. Doesn't matter, you wanna go four blade, you wanna do three blade, even by blade if you want. And then when you find something you kinda like, stay there, don't, don't bounce back and forth until you master that prop. Now, these are the 5.1 by 3.1 that I switched to recently, but they're not that different than the R42 that I was flying before. So you see, I'm kind of sticking with a theme. It's just a little bit underpowered, so I boosted the KV a little bit, and now I'm good to go. You should never really have to change motors uh, after you find something you like because you can change the KV in your OSD with the motor output limiting. The only reason that you would need to change motors is if you wanted to, if you found something lighter or you wanted to try something with stronger or weaker magnets, uh, but staying in the same stator size. So yeah, those three things are the main things. You're not going to get any real different performance by using a different FC or uh, ESC or your VTX isn't going to do anything. Your antennas aren't going to do anything. Um, you could argue that the RX would do something if you know you ran crossfire shot or something with lower latency. And the camera does a lot. I want to kind of talk about this on a whole separate video. But the short version of it is, if you're a conservative flyer, I would go, if you're too conservative and you don't want to be as conservative, I think that a wider field of view is better for you, and I'll tell you why in a second. And if you're a little too reckless, I think a narrow field of view will kind of calm you down. So a narrow field of view will kind of put things in your face um, make you see the true distance and that'll maybe make you, at least for me, it made me kind of sketched about getting too close to things. For me, having a wide field of view kind of pushes everything back and also makes me comfortable because I can see uh, so much more around me. For example, if my quad is this far away from the ground and I have a narrow field of view, I'll feel like I'm here. If I have a wide field of view, I'll feel like I'm here because the wider the field of view, the kind of further away it makes you feel. So for cautious people, I would recommend a wide field of view and then stick to it because you don't, it's gonna change everything. It's gonna change the confidence in how you fly if you keep changing uh, cameras with different fields of view. The gaps are gonna look different. The distance between you and something is gonna feel different to you. So that's a, a big thing, a big mental, uh, game that we play with our FPV cameras that I want to make a whole video about. 
and I want to make a whole video about comprehensive tuning. So using props, using motor output limiting, all that stuff is coming. I just wanted to kind of share how I did it and also the mistakes I made. You know, I, I could have probably cut that two years into one year. And I see a lot of pilots do. They They've been flying for six months and they're killing it way better than me. I think about this kind of stuff all the time, way, way more than I should. So I figured I'd share some of it with you. And uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. If you want to see the parts to my perfect build, it's all in the description. Check it out. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.